Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live. I'm Joe Lynch. Today is May 5th, 2020. I'm pleased to be joined once again by Somerville City Council President Matt McLaughlin and his colleague, the City Councilor from Ward 4, Jesse Klingent. Jesse, I'm going to give you first dibs on this one. I always ask Matt how he's doing. Mm. He says he's terrific. Your first appearance, how are you doing? Sure, Joe. Well, I, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Um, I hope everybody has plans to, I know, uh, I know my colleague from Ward 1 enjoys the margarita. I think uh, I'll probably enjoy one tonight myself. Um, how I'm doing, Joe? Uh, you know, like everybody else, I mean, I'm, I, you, know, you feel a little cooped up, um, but, you know, I'm getting a as, as best we can, um, just uh, you know, I have a 13 year old daughter at home, so that has its challenges. But um, I have I set up a softball net so she can hit balls on the back, and you know she's been doing lots of schoolwork. They have them doing the schoolwork now, and uh, uh, my wife, who works for the school department, is also home. So the good news is we've been having a lot of great family time to spend together. Um, uh, you know, on the downside, like I said, it's it's gets a little like Groundhog Day, a little repetitive. Um, and I try to switch things up. You know, I probably put on a few pounds, even though I've been trying to like walk more and, and uh, stuff like that. But but overall, we're doing fine. We're doing I'm blessed and I'm lucky, you know, to uh, uh, I feel very fortunate. Uh, a lot of people aren't in the same situation. So so uh, I'm, that's who I'm most concerned about. I'm glad to hear it, Jesse. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you take stock, you know, every day you wake up and you are kind of thankful for what you have. Councillor McLaughlin, welcome back. You have some updates yeah. on the uh, public health, public safety realm, but how are you doing since last week? Uh, I'm doing very well, Joe. Um, you know, I'm just taking the time to focus on personal and professional development. Uh, I'm very fortunate, like Councillor Quingen said, to have a job, uh, not only to have a job, but have a job where I feel like I'm contributing. So I'm doing very well. Good. Let's jump into it, Matt. You've got some updates for us since last week. Take yes, away. updates uh, since last week. So as of today, uh, which is May 5th, as Jesse mentioned, uh, we've had uh, 640 positive cases of COVID-19 in Somerville. 267 people have recovered and there have been nine fatalities. Uh, I want to update people again uh, that the mask requirement that the city of Somerville passed last week is now a statewide requirement. Uh, so all across the state, Governor Baker has uh, fa uh, face mask requirements in some of all, our standard is still the same, and there is a fine associated with not wearing a mask. Um, we've received a lot of comments about this, both from people absolutely opposed to it, to people who support it, but think that there should be adjustments. And I really think, you know, the message I want to have to people is to, you know, you wear the mask, first of all, please, and use common sense. Uh, there's, you know, the, the likelihood, the ability of us to enforce this mask requirement uh, is very strained. It would be strained under any circumstances. And currently we're requiring this, but this is, you know, a please do this sort of thing. Uh, it's not, you know, we're, we're not trying to have a police state like some people suggested or uh, really create a burden on people. We just want people to wear the mask. And it's not about just you, it's about the public safety. So again, if I wear a mask or a cloth mask, for example, and someone with COVID does not wear a mask, me wearing a mask doesn't do much for me. So, you know, I, 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 I'm asking people, you know, put aside your feelings on the subject, wear a mask whenever you can. Um, if there's not a practical use to it, if you have a young child who doesn't, can't wear the mask or there's some reasonable way, reason you can't wear the mask, you know, keep, just do what you can, basically, and try to contribute. This isn't about punishing people. It's about everyone contributing. Um, and the city of Somerville is still doing universal testing or they're ramping it up even more. Uh, you can get a test from uh, the Somerville Hospital, uh, whether you have symptoms or not. For now, it's still drive up, but uh, we're working on uh, walking and biking access as well as having access to East Somerville. If people are interested in that, they can call 617-665-2928 uh, from Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I encourage everybody to get tested. Some people said, you know, what if I don't have symptoms? I don't want to take it away from anybody. Uh, it's really important, like, for people to get tested if they want to get tested. So I would feel no guilt about getting tested, and hopefully we'll have enough tests for everybody. But the more people that we test, the more the better idea we have of the situation we're facing. 
Matt, uh, Matt, let me ask you a quick question. Do we have any update on how many people have been tested since they lifted the restriction of uh, CHA patients only? Uh, Jesse, you, we talked about that last night. I believe it was something around 300. I'm uh, throwing yeah, a number it's not nearly a, Yeah, I mean, it's not nearly enough, um, but it's it's something around the range of 300. <clears throat> um, and just to, just to jump, piggyback onto what um, Council McLaughlin said, um, uh, Doug did update us on, uh, Director Cress update us on uh, the, the residency requirement, like with what you have to show. And it's it's really, I mean, just show up with something that has a, a name and address on it. They're not really looking, you know, they're not looking to pin you down as to whether or not you, uh, you know, so if you, so if you don't have proper documentation, don't worry about it. If you think you have it, please go get tested. Great. Thanks, Jesse. Matt, sorry. Go ahead. So yeah, universal testing, uh, the Somerville Cares Fund is still raising money and there's also funds available for people who uh, need assistance. Uh, and a lot of these updates I'm giving, as usual, you can get from the Somerville uh, City website at somervillema.gov and check out the link for coronavirus. They'll give you all sorts of updates. One of them is how to contribute and also how to get assistance if you need it. Uh, the city has also updated us yesterday saying that uh, they need, they still have a need for volunteers, especially for things like delivering food or preparing supplies for people. Jesse and I and several other counselors have participated in this. Uh, they're looking for drivers to deliver supplies to people. Uh, and they're looking for some consistent help there. So, you know, they get waves of people and then it disappears. Uh, if anybody is interested in uh, participating in that, uh, they can contact uh, Jen Dutra at some of LMA.gov. Uh, so that's J D U T R A at some of LMA.gov. Uh, and she will connect you uh, to volunteer efforts. So that'd be greatly appreciated if people are able to do that. Uh, Matt, and then Matt, let me, <clears throat> can I just jump on that too, Matt? Yep. So, so, um, you know, going through the city, there's a little bit of a process. So I hope that doesn't deter people. Um, you do have to do uh, proper checks and so on. So, so it's you can't necessarily do it on a whim, but it's really important that people get onto this list because this this pool of volunteers feeds uh, numerous organizations throughout the city, um, Council on Aging, uh, as well as others. So, uh, as well as the school food program and stuff. So, it's really important um, if you have to get Corey that it takes it's not, doesn't take much time at all, but it's very uh, it's very helpful if you can get on. Uh, get signed up and uh, and help out with the city. Uh, you can make an impact right here. So and remember, today's Giving Tuesday. So let's give some money to our local local uh, um, nonprofits. I plan on giving uh, quite a few bucks today uh, to a number of um, of our great local nonprofits. You steal you steal of my PSAs, there, Clint. <laughs> well, well, that's a, that's actually a great segue into my final updates. Uh, because there are a number of uh, events coming up to support local businesses and also to get yourself supplied. Uh, so the Somerville, East Somerville Main Streets is hosting the Somerville Market this Sunday, uh, May 10th from 10 a.m. to noon. And basically how this works is if you go to their website at eastsomervillemainstreets.org slash market, you can order food from local restaurants online. Uh, so you order it online and then between 10 and noon this Sunday, you can go pick it up at Dino's Pasta. So they will have all the supplies you need and it'll be good, uh, it's a good treat for people and it's helping the local businesses as well. Uh, so if you're really interested, if you're picking up food anyways and you wanna do it the safe way and help local businesses, uh, eastsomervillemainstreets.org slash market. Uh, and then finally, uh, we we're happy to see this past week, uh, the city council approved permits for the Davis Square and Union Square farmers markets. Uh, and those will start, the Davis Square Farmers Market will reopen May 20th uh, to June 25th, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the Union Square Farmers Market will open Saturdays, May 19th to November 21st, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I was personally, I was surprised to see this on the agenda, uh, considering that, you know, we're closing so many things. But the idea of this is, this is an essential service, people need their food. Um, and it's supporting local small businesses, and it's a degree safer than actually being inside. So if the supermarkets are open, the farmer's market is going to be open as well. So people still practice social distancing, uh, wear your face mask, keep six feet away from people, try to not handle produce like you normally would, feeling the grapefruit and 
uh, making sure that, and then putting it back, uh, keep your social distancing and respect the rules. But we're very happy to see that these businesses are going to be able to uh, serve the community uh, during this crisis. So that's all I have, Joe. Yeah, don't be a pick, don't be a picky Joe Lynch looking at every single group grapefruit. No, no, I, I think most of the viewers now know that uh, being of a certain age, I have to be extremely careful when I go out in public. So wearing a mask and wearing gloves is not new to me. Um, but I, I, you know, I still am extremely cautious about large crowds. Um, I, I am in constant touch with the folks at Union Square Main Streets for obvious reasons. My backdrop indicates where we have, have our home. Um, and uh, Jessica Eschleman, both Jessica Eschleman and Jen uh, Atwood, At yep. Atwood J have been on the show to pump what the local Main Streets organizations have been doing uh, during COVID. And Jessica Eschleman emailed me just yesterday wanting to know, um, we store some of the things that they need for the Union Square Farmers Market. And I was just as surprised to see that they were gonna start the markets again. I, I wish them well. I hope that everyone who plans to attend those, including the vendors, understand that if this does not go well, um, the city could potentially end them just as fast as they're starting them. So I do wanna wish them well. The other organization, when Matt was talking about some of the not-for-profits and the need for volunteers is the Mamas organization. They were on uh, Somerville Media Center talking about how their organization is delivering food fast and furious. I have two neighbors that I'm not gonna call out by name. They have been the volunteers for all the organizations using their own gas, using their own cars uh, and volunteering three to four days a week. So, you know, when we look at the downside of how certain human behavior reacts to crisis, which we're in, um, Sometimes we tend to focus on the negative, but I have to tell you, this city is a shining example of what giving is really all about. So, well, Joe, just, while, while we're at it, if, if I could plug Mamas real quick, because uh, they actually helped me uh, help a senior uh, do a Costco run the other day. So I was very grateful to them. Um, and there's a hotline people can call if they need assistance from the Mass Mutual Aid Society. And that number is 339. 545-1315. And they will, they have, these are all volunteer run people. Uh, they do what they can when they can. And if you need help, uh, try giving them a call. Great. Matt, if you don't mind, I'm gonna shift over to Ward 4. Um, Jesse's gonna talk about some of the updates and things that are going on in his district. Um, we did have two of his merchants in just last week, I think, or the week before the Winter Hill Brewing Company folks and the Neighborhood Protos folks came in to talk about how they're operating under current conditions. Jesse, let's let's just leave it open mic day for you, sure. um, unless the president of the council wants to, you know, make you formally ask his permission. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Go ahead. Talk so, um, yeah, as far as the businesses go, um, I, I know that Lauren Drago has been checking in quite frequently on the folks, uh, letting people know about the program for small businesses. I actually, um, I, uh, John Faria from Thurston Spire reached out and um, I, I hooked them up and he was very grateful. Hopefully things work out for him in terms of, of getting a, um, uh, some, some funds. Um, overall, I, I don't think businesses are doing obviously very well. I mean, certainly most of the places are closed, uh, the nail shop, um, uh, I know that the guys from Winter Hill Brewery have been, uh, you know, struggling, but, but, you know, doing the best they can. Um, and, you know, Leone's seems to be doing all right. I, again, I, I haven't done a check-in since I probably, I probably do for one, but, but overall, I think the food places are, are, are stumbling along and I think the, uh, the other businesses are, you know, they're in real trouble. So, um, really concerned about, about the folks. Uh, I've met some great people up there at uh, like the Brazilian clothing shop, um, Brazilian fashion shop. I'm worried about them. Uh, they just moved in. They've been trying to get off the ground. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're just going to have to 
do the best we can to help everybody and then stay on top of it and stay on top of the economic development team to make sure that we're, we're giving people the proper information and making those connections. Obviously the liquor store is doing pretty well. Uh, it seems to be, um, um, but beyond that, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of touch and go with the food places. What's fascinating to me, uh, Jesse, is, you know, watching those who were able to adapt to it very, very quickly. So you have the pizza shops, the sub shops who were in the delivery business anyway. So right. that was not a hard transition for them. <clears throat> it was right. some of the more uh, dining establishments, dining right. in, and they're going to hurt going forward with it, whatever kind of physical distancing protocols come into place further down the line. So whether that's in June or July, who knows? But Right. And I mean, just to this, I mean, sadly, this could be uh, sort of like the um, the nail in the coffin for some businesses. Um, I know Mystic Cleaners has uh, decided to close up shop. I don't know. I don't want to speak on the exact details as to why. I heard that there was something about selling the, the building. I, I, I'm sure this coronavirus pandemic has played a role in it. So um, that's what I mean about sort of being that like straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of businesses, which would be sad to see uh, businesses like Mr. Cleaners go. I mean, they've been in the city for ages and ages. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a sign also on the uh, convenience store, the K2 market um, across the street there. And uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to check in with them, actually. I just saw my wife saw that last night. Um, so I, I really just I hope we can make we can weather this storm and uh, Keep the to, businesses we do have. To either of you, let me let me ask the question. You mentioned earlier economic development. Is economic development tracking how many businesses are closing for sure and how many businesses are suspended and operating on, under duress? I mean, that should be something that our, our economic development team has a handle on. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good that's a good idea, Joe. A good question, and I, I don't have an answer for that. Um, I do know that they are continuing to um, further projects and you know um, efforts that are in the pipeline. For instance, that could segue to uh, the Winter Hill Star Market Winter Hill redevelop uh, neighborhood um, <clears throat> redevelopment plan or urban renewal plan, I should say. If Jesse, be Jesse, before we go sure. there, we have a question from somebody who's watching on Facebook Live. Sure. And this sure. comes from Chris DeFilippo. Mm -hmm. Can anyone tell us where to get masks? 311, the city's call center, didn't seem to know. And Elder Services that they connected me to didn't answer. Someone said Target. Any any suggestions for Chris as to where he can get um, So as far as, you know, medical grade masks, I don't have I do not know when I, I I have actually early on I ordered a few cloth masks I know that uh, many people in the community are making the, the idea is that you go out with something covering covering your face uh, covering your mouth it's you know I think it still stands that you could wear you know as long as you're covering your face with something um, uh, but there are lots of different places you can get uh, cloth masks from uh, a lot of people are selling them and so on. So I, I, if the question is, is, is where do you find medical type, type masks? Um, I do not know. And uh, I do think that they're still in short supply. Why don't so, we do, why don't so we do I this? Could, um, I could address a couple of these things real quick. Sure. Uh, so first of all, like Jesse said, um, you know, first of all, there are masks available online and I bet Target may have masks, but I don't want to tell you to go to Target and then there's no masks. Uh, but there's a number of different things you can do there. There are uh, YouTube websites or YouTube pages where you can learn how to make your own mask. I personally uh, use neck gaiters, uh, which cover my neck and my face. So you've seen me wear them before and I ordered a bunch of those online. They're not medical masks. Uh, and so they're not necessarily going to protect you from getting the virus. But if somebody had the virus and wore that mask, it would make it less likely for someone else to get the mask. So that's a big thing too, is, you know, we don't want to create the illusion that the mask is this shield from anything. Uh, it's a measure of protection that we're asking everyone to take. Uh, so you can create your own mask. There are methods of buying masks and the city will be providing masks to people very soon. We don't have those yet, uh, right. but we've got several thousand masks coming that we're going to give to people. Right. And then just to backtrack really quick on your question about businesses. Uh, fortunately, before all this happened, we passed a, uh, store, a vacant storefronts ordinance that myself and Councilor Clean worked on, 
to address these vacant buildings that have already existed. So that goes into that's already in effect. And after 30 days, if your business is closed your, or your storefront is closed, you have to report it to the city, to the Economic Development Department. So we should have those numbers. And I'll finally just plug that the Economic Development Team is working on community development block grants uh, to assist small businesses during this time. And we have a committee formed of people who are looking through applicants and seeing who's the most in need. Okay, let's go back to a, a um, we have a producer behind the scenes. Adam, I don't know if you can contact Chris or if Chris is still listening. Chris, if you could give your contact information uh, to us, uh, we'll try to track down. We have multi-prong access to, uh, and I don't know if you're looking for medical masks or just something, you know, a street grade mask. But why don't you contact us and we'll, we'll try to get you plugged in between Councilor Klingon and Councilor McLaughlin. So we'll do that for you. On the business side, though, what I guess what I'm looking at is, and Jesse and I were talking before the show, you know, we both got notified um, that one of our favorite places on Winter Hill, a lot of favorite places, but Mystic Cleaners, you know, between Dave and, and Anthony, they've been down there for years. And I got notification a week and a half ago that they just couldn't do it. So, um, you know, more and more of those businesses despite all of the things that are coming out of the federal government, despite what the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is trying to do, despite the efforts that the city of Somerville is going to do, we're in serious trouble when it comes to these small businesses. Many of them will not be able to survive. That brings into play what's happening, um, and it crosses over, Matt, between public health and public safety, is the push in certain segments to start to reopen the economy. Are we getting any sense from Director Doug Kress of Public Health or from the mayor's office or from anyone in city government as to when they actually think a slow reopening could start to take place in Somerville? No, not right now. As of right now, May 18th is our current deadline and people should not be surprised if that deadline gets extended. Uh, I have unfortunately seen over 30 states uh, going through phase reopening. Some of these are states that are very low population, so it makes a little sense. Uh, they're a little different situation than us, but a lot of them I think are unwisely reopening because it's just gonna make the situation worse and then that's going to affect the economy too. So everybody's worried about their jobs. Everyone's worried about their livelihood and the state of the economy in general. Uh, but if we don't handle this, then it's going to have a negative impact on the economy for an even longer <clears throat> period of time. Uh, so we're, we're, I don't think there's any plans to reopen just yet uh, because we want to see this flatten and re be reduced. And I'm taking my guidance from the director of public health, from the mayor, and also from the governor who... Uh, you know, fortunately, in some of a lot of the things that we've introduced, the governor, the governor introduces just a few days later. So we're a few steps ahead, uh, but we're still trying to uh, handle this all. So as of right now, there's no updates on reopening. Let's go back to um, Jesse for a minute. Jesse, you have one of the larger um, congregate housing developments in the city yep. at the Mystic. What are yep. you hearing out of Mystic? Um, so I've been in regular contact with the director, Joe Macaluso. Um, he seems to be really up on, on, on things. Um, actually, I have some numbers. Um, I spoke to him the other day. So over their entire um, network of housing, which includes North Street and some places, um, there's been 40 cases in SH, SHA properties. Um, 10 of those have been elderly folks. 30 of those 40 have been quarantined for the, the full two weeks with no new symptoms. Um, and there's like five cases and uh, still current five cases in one of the senior buildings and uh, five cases of, of family uh, buildings. So that's the 40 there. And, um, you know, I, I, I asked him also about the mask because, you know, I continue to find myself in a situation where we have a, an authority um, in the housing, which, is essentially a police authority. The mayor, we grant them policing authorities. They have guns and stuff. And I asked him how uh, that will overlap with the mask. I'm sure many people have concerns about how they're going to enforce that. And um, quite frankly, his answer was um, they they haven't gotten guidance. Um, they they do not know 
Uh, well, I can, well, I can tell you this. He said that in the senior buildings, they've been having some uh, inspectors go in and, um, and just reminding people and then uh, even giving them masks. They've been giving out masks in the family housing in, in Mystic View Apartments, um, as well as the elderly housing. I know the mayor actually did one round of giving out masks over there. Um, but but, but their, um, their approach is in terms of the enforceability, the, the $300, right? Um, um, you know, they don't want to en enforce that anybody. Um, and certainly um, we need more guidance as to, we need to figure out exactly how they're going to, to be enforcing that. I think without guidance, it leaves a lot of questions and a lot of uh, power in the hands of those, those gentlemen over there who, uh, you know, do a great job uh, keeping the place safe, but do we really want them out, uh, uh, you know, policing masks? When I guess my understanding is, is that um, for the most part, a lot of the folks in there have been um, adhering better than some of our other uh, populations in the city who like to go play ultimate Frisbee or whatever. Um, a lot of the, uh, the immigrant folks and, and the folks who live in the Mystic View um, have been practicing great social distancing. And uh, from what I see when I go through and from what Joe told me, uh, have been uh, wearing masks because they know their vulnerability and they know that they're in close quarters. And they also, I don't think they want to tempt it like, you know, some other uh, gung-ho folks that are, are out there, um, uh, you know, carrying on with regular life. Unfortunately. Jesse, Jesse, that's the second time you've thrown that bait out to me to try to get me riled up about a certain segment of the population. I'm not going to take it. But I well, think I think anyone who's watched me over the past two months knows me well enough that I'll be the old guy on the porch <laughs> yelling at them when they walk by, put on your mask. Yeah. So Yeah. And well, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around that sometimes too, Joe, right? That's some, sometimes it's, it's that old neighborhood thing for like their own good, but it also could be taken as, you know, um, you know, whatever, uh, mass explaining. I guess that'll be a new, you know, that'll be a new thing. You know, you should be wearing a mask. Um, while we're still on the housing, I just want to um, address, we did get a, a letter from Joe Macaluso uh, regarding um, evictions. They, they are not doing any evictions. Um, they are um, uh, adjusting income, literally, Right now, they can do. Folks can do like a self-certification. So if like tomorrow, so if somebody lost their job today, usually they'd have to verify that they lost their job. They're letting people just self-certify. Say, I lost my job. Take my word for it. You know, they can catch up later on if, if in fact, that's not true. But ultimately, they're really, really working with people to make sure that um, uh, you know that they're not putting the screws to anybody in terms of the rent. So their rent will be immediately dropped. And um, and, and again, there, there is no evictions uh, taking place and there will be no evictions uh, w when things open back up uh, fully. I mean, they fully understand that their population has been heavily affected by um, uh, a lot of people at work. And Jesse, for any of the folks who are living in the public housing system, mm -hmm. um, I assume the Somerville Housing Authority has a lot of that information posted on their website as well. Yeah, they do. Um, well, they they rely a lot on um, flyering. Tony, I actually talked to Joe yeah. about you know the, the well, um, Jesse. I'm sorry, we have about ten seconds left. So oh what, man, what we're going to do is we're going to point people in the direction of the Somerville Housing Authority site, and then if they have more information directly related to Mystic, they can give you a call. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Please. Yeah. Get in touch with me. And uh, is there any other questions that came in? I thought somebody sent a question. In there. Uh, no, that was my countdown to tell me we were running out of time. Wow. Well, this was fun. It was fast. And um, uh, Jesse, you know. you're welcome back anytime as long as Councilor McLaughlin let you in. Okay. All right. Anyone else in first? Like I say, I hope I don't have to have every councilor on. I hope this is resolved by then. But I got 10 other people to, uh, to have on the show. They're all welcome back, Matt. You know that. Councillor Jesse Klingen, Councillor Matt McLaughlin, thanks for joining us on Somerville Joe, Media Center Thanks for Center doing Live. this. You're thanks welcome. Thanks for doing this. And remember, give lots of money to our local nonprofits today. See you next time. Take care. Take care.